Installing a residential Advantex treatment system. Manufactured by Arenco. Step 5. Install the BioTube pump package. Install the support pipes that come with a BioTube pump vault. No support pipes are needed for an earless vault that rests on the tank bottom. Gently lower the vault into position in the access riser. The support pipe should rest on top of the tank at the bottom of the riser unless the vault was designed specifically to rest on the tank bottom as this one does. Sometimes the splice box comes pre-installed by the dealer. If not, install an internal splice box inside the access riser or an external splice box outside the riser following the directions at the end of this video. Screw the discharge assembly onto the pump using Teflon paste or tape. Carefully lower the pump and discharge assembly into the flow inducer of the BioTube pump vault. Do not hold the pump by its cable. Lubricate the riser grommet and push the discharge assembly nipple through the grommet. Orient the discharge assembly so that you can easily remove the BioTube filter cartridge without having to disconnect anything. Typically, you'll want to extend the handles of the BioTube filter cartridge using 1 inch pipe. Mount the float switch assembly in the pump vault by clipping it into the float bracket. If necessary, glue a piece of 1 inch pipe into the top of the assembly so it can be detached without removing the BioTube cartridge or pump vault. The float switches were set to standard heights at the factory. Check them against the project's plans and specifications, or consult your dealer, to make sure those heights are correct for your project. If you need to adjust a float, loosen the screw on its collar and slide it up or down on the float stem. Neatly coil the wires within the riser as shown. The RSV comes with an 18 inch stinger pipe, which is the right length for a Renko fiberglass tanks. If you need to make the stinger longer or shorter, refer to the manual for instructions. Once you're sure the stinger is the right length, glue it to the RSV cage and the body. Cut the 3 inch diameter handle pipe to the correct length if necessary and glue it into the top of the RSV body. The small cross piece should be oriented parallel to the quick disconnect so it doesn't obstruct access to other components in the riser. For Mode 3 installations, the Duckbill RSV has a flexible PVC tube that vents the RSV cage to the atmosphere. Push the flexible PVC tube onto the fitting on the cage. Then thread the other end through the tube holder on the RSV body. Leave about 6 inches of tube extending through the tube holder and cut off any excess. Mode 1 installations do not require a vent tube. Carefully slide the RSV into its bracket inside the riser as far as it will go. Use your weight to push it down and then wiggle it till you're sure it's snug. Step 6. Install the pump basin. Your system may include a pump basin that conveys effluent to the dispersal area. If necessary, install the external splice box on the pump basin, following the instructions at the end of this video. Dig the hole for the pump basin 4 inches deeper than the height of the basin and place a 4 inch bed of gravel in the bottom of the hole. Place the pump basin in the hole. Orient it so as to minimize the number of bends in the electrical conduit between the control panel and the basin. Partially backfill a hole to support the basin while you're working on it. If the pump basin was not pre-drilled, drill a 2 and 3 quarter inch hole for the 2 inch filtrate line from the RSV. The line should have at least a 2% slope down from the RSV. Install a grommet in the hole, securing it with a bead of ADH100 adhesive. Lubricate the inside of the grommet with pipe lube. 
Likewise, drill the appropriate size hole for the discharge line going to the dispersal area and install a grommet. Push the end of the 2 inch filtrate line through its grommet and glue the other end of the line into the discharge coupling of the RSVT. Glue a downward facing elbow to the end of the discharge line inside the pump basin. Assemble the pump and discharge assembly using Teflon paste or tape. Lower the pump into the flow inducer at the bottom of the basin. Insert the nipple of the discharge assembly through the grommeted hole for the line to the dispersal field. Set the floats at the desired height and install the float assembly in the bracket on the wall of the riser. Wrap the cords neatly. Lay the pipe for the line to the dispersal area in the trench and connect it to the discharge nipple using external flex hose. Do not bend the flex hose more than 15 degrees. If local regulations require it, install toning wire on this pipe before backfilling. Step 7. Connect the transport line to the pod. Determine which end of the pod you are installing the transport line into. Remove a couple of textile sheets from that end of the pod so that they won't be damaged when the hole is cut. Then use a hole saw to cut a 1 and 3 quarter inch hole in the pod where it is marked with a cross. Remove any burrs from the hole. Apply a bead of adhesive and insert the grommet. Glue the coupling for the manifold union to the upper manifold elbow. Lubricate the lower manifold elbow and insert it through the grommeted hole from the inside of the pod. After wiping off the lubricant, glue a coupling and the 1 inch transport line from the discharge assembly to this elbow. If a drain back discharge assembly is being used to prevent freezing, slope the line so that it drains back to the tank after every cycle. Replace the sheets you removed. Connect the union on the upper elbow to the manifold inside the pod. Before closing and securing the pod lid, make sure you've left the valves at the ends of the laterals open. That way, when the lines are flushed at startup, any debris in them will flow out. Step 8. Install the passive air vent. Glue the passive air vent to the 2 inch fitting on the filter wall. You can install it up to 20 feet from the pod. If you do, make sure the line slopes back toward the filter and doesn't sag, so that water can't accumulate in the line and block the flow of air. Step 9. Backfill. Backfill and compact around the Advantex pod in maximum 12 inch lifts. Native soil is acceptable if there are no large or sharp rocks that may damage the filter walls. If native material is not usable, backfill with pea gravel. Slope the fill away from the pod to prevent surface water from ponding on or around the pod. When backfilling, be careful not to alter the slope of the pipes. Brace the pipes, especially around the RSV, and carefully fill around them. Finishing the installation. The control panel must be installed by a licensed electrician. Instructions for this are in a separate module at the end of this video. Now you're ready to make sure the system is operational. You'll find the startup instructions at the back of the installation guide. When the house is ready to be occupied, a service provider will do the final startup with your assistance. Then you can move on to your next job, knowing the system you've just installed is in good hands. For more information about Advantex treatment systems, call Lorenco at 800-348-9843 or visit our website at www.orenco.com. <laughs>